Cable Bahamas has always been considered the innovator. People can have confidence in Cable Bahamas as a mobile operator because of our past history. We've proven to the Bahamian community that we are in fact able to manage additional services as a telecommunications company. Customers expect the best from Cable Bahamas. The technology that we bring is revolutionary technology because we know that the Bahamian public, they deserve it and Cable Bahamas is here to bring it to them. We are ready. Turn us on. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight, news. The former minister responsible for BEC outraged over Bahamar's big BEC bill. This while, another FNM MP says liquidation is the wrong move in the ongoing Bahamar debacle. A man is murdered in his car, plus a young Bahamian artist being sought out by the hottest celebrities and the world's most influential people. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. weekend, former Minister of State for the Environment Fenton Nemour is slamming the Christie administration for allowing Baja Mar to rack up utility bills totaling millions of dollars. This after it was revealed that Baja Mar owes the cash-strapped Bahamas Electricity Corporation nearly $20 million. Jasmine Brown reports. Nimor says the revelations about Bahamar are simply shocking and there needs to be answers as to how the incomplete mega resort was able to rack up such a hefty bill. I'm indeed shocked with the developments at Bahamar that the government had allowed the electricity bill to rise to $26 million, knowing full well that BC has financial challenges. Well, first of all, I would not, knowing their situation, never have allowed them to get below $10 million. A winding up petition filed by the government last week. A winding up petition filed by the government last week revealed that Baharmar owes the government more than $58 million. Included in this amount was $26,327,953.85 owed to BEC and more than $3 million owed to water and sewage. Nemour says it's I question how the executive chairman, Mr. Leslie, dollars, knowing full well that BEC has financial challenges. I question how the executive chairman, Mr. Leslie Miller, allowed it to rise to that. I question why the minister, Mr. Brave Davis, allowed it to rise to that level because they receive regular reports as to their financial status. And in addition to that, why did they allow the bill to the Water and Sewage Corporation to rise above $3 million? The Water and Sewage Corporation has been broke from its inception. Why would the government approve that to happen? where two utilities are owed over $30 million. Clearly, both the minister and the executive chairman have failed in that regard. Nemour says when he served as Minister of State for the Environment, there were policies in place to prevent these types of issues from occurring. He says while he understands some of the money owed was inherited when Bahamar took over the Wyndham Nassau Resort, he believes that should have been settled from the start. He says he was faced with a similar issue during his first six months in office. I was faced with that very same problem with the establishment in Exuma when Sandals took over Four Seasons, uh, where they had owed $7 million. Before we proceeded on with Sandals, uh, the first thing we did was address that debt and ensure that BEC got their money. So again, I am saying the minister and those fell through in that regard. BC Chairman Leslie Miller said earlier this month that Baharmar's debt to BEC will not impact the corporation's daily operations. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown. <laughs> 
Meantime, Montague MP Richard Lightbourne is questioning the Attorney General's decision to file a winding of petition against Baha Mar. Government is seeking the appointment of a provisional liquidator to manage Baha Mar's affairs in hopes of getting the stalled project completed. However, Lightbourne says that's the last thing Baha Mar needs. The one thing we all know is that it is essential for the, for the country to ensure that, that um, Obama gets up and running in the shortest possible time. But quite frankly, once you go to court, um, all bets are off. It, it Baha Mar said in a statement earlier this month that the winding up petition puts its staff and assets at severe risk and significantly jeopardizes the future of the resort. Lightborn says from his experience, the winding up process can take years and in some cases decades. It drags out the whole process and um, I've been involved in many um, liquidations over the years since I've been practicing as an attorney and I believe, I, I, I don't think one liquidation has ever been concluded. One. I don't think it's ever happened. There's still ones that were starting in the 70s which are still on the, on the books. Have not. So that is the real concern that once you get into, into litig um, to bankruptcy that once you point the liquidators um, the, or the legal expense involved, at the end of the day the creditors are going to see very little money out of this. And Lightborn says no one wins if this legal battle drags on. I don't think government will in all likelihood get repaid the monies which are owed to all the different government departments. So we just have to, uh, you know, have to see where we go. It well, the Bahamar crisis also has the attention of international credit rating agency Standard & Poor's, which has reportedly reached out to the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce. Chairman Gowan Bo says S&P's concern is valid. Well, of course, uh, you know the, the the big discussion now is is, is naturally Bahama and the impact that's going to have on the economy. So, Standard and Poor's, we saw, you know, almost immediately issued a warning following um, announcement of challenges at Bahama, and they reached out. We've Bo, who is one of three professionals from Price Waterhouse Coopers, identified as proposed Bahama. Liquidator says chamber execs have sought to assure S&P analysts of the country's economic prospects beyond the resort. We are constantly now getting, if you will, dialogue with international counterparts um, as it relates to things that are taking place in the economy. And what that enables is, if you will, what I would call a, a broader perspective being brought to some of these um, assessments. And from the crime beat tonight, police have launched an island-wide search for two gunmen believed to be responsible for the country's most recent murder. According to police, the victim was sitting with a woman inside his vehicle on Homestead Street last night when gunmen shot him. Officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Paul Roll, gave these details at the scene. Officers responded to the scene where they encountered a male uh, sitting on the ground outside of uh, his vehicle, suffering from multiple gunshots about his body. What we know in our preliminary stages of this investigation is that this young man, whom we believe to be in his uh, early 30s, was sitting in the car along with a female companion when two persons accosted them in the vehicle and began discharging shots into the, the car. Police say the man died on scene. However, the female passenger was not harmed. Police are also appealing to anyone with information on this latest killing to contact them. She was able to get out of the vehicle safely. Uh, we have her secured presently. EMS responded to the scene and upon examining the male, uh, pronounced him to be lifeless. We appeal to persons in this community who would have seen uh, something or may have some information about this to this homicide to provide information to the police to help us advance this investigation here this evening. Now on a lighter note, he's drawn and painted portraits of some of the world's most influential people and has developed a name for himself locally as the go-to artist for photorealistic renderings of dignitaries and Bahamian movers and shakers. Most recently, artist Jamal Roll completed two dozen portraits of Bahamian sports legends and created more than 40 portraits of Bahamian honorees for independent celebrations. Roll says it all began when he started drawing on walls at the age of four and already knew it would be his lifelong passion. I knew I had a talent that would draw up on the walls. 
I would get beaten and still do it. <laughs> and so I knew that that was something that was special to me. And I knew when I grew up that my career would have been something around art. In school, I could remember a teacher telling me, um, well, instead of me doing math, I would just be drawn in, in the back of the class. And I drew this caricature of the teacher, and everybody passed it around. And instead of me being scolded, the teacher paid me for it. So I was like, hey, <laughs> I made it a, a career. Hence the start of my career. Because after that, I had jobs from other teachers. And then the principal um, commissioned me to do a portrait of her. Rawl said after graduating high school, he drew street portraits in downtown Nassau and at Marina Village, Paradise Island, of tourists. That's when he started drawing celebrities. He's drawn more than 80 celebrity portraits and has been lucky enough to meet many of his subjects. Well, I've done portraits for people like Oprah, Prince Harry, President Obama, I haven't met him, but we've done a portrait and we've made um, the necessary contacts um, with, with the White House. Uh, it has been a, a great career to be from the Bahamas and, and being sorted out from all over the world. The 32-year-old artist said he's always shocked when the people he admires most are more excited to meet him, but he said he doesn't let it get to his head. It's a good, a good feeling, but I think what's surprising is to see a celebrity um, look at you as a celebrity. And so when I'm like, I mean, a fan of yours, but they're a, a bigger fan of mine when they meet me because they'd be like, oh, I saw the drawing that you did for Puffy and wow, I'm so glad you did my portrait. Make sure you get my picture good. And they're like, wow, I'm the person on the calm, you know, <laughs> angle on most of the time and it will be them. They're grounded and I'm, I'm just happy to, to know that a dream of mine is to become an artist um, all around the world to be, to be recognized to be from the Bahamas is a good feeling. Roll said to date his most memorable experience was traveling to Vatican City to personally present a portrait to Pope Francis. Pope portrait was memorable because I had a chance to go to Italy, Vatican City and see a lot of the art and you know it was just a dream of mine. It was that crazy dream that oh, you know what why my portrait can go to to be amongst portraits of the greats like Michelangelo and Raphael. Why not? And to see um, that dream realized was, was a memorable, memorable feat for me. But I remember Oprah, hers is memorable too because um, she sent me a letter. And I was thinking, wow, what are everybody, millions of people, billions of people are probably trying to reach out to Oprah. Out of all the people in the world, why would she think about sending me a letter? So that's a memorable a memorable one for me but and Roll said he may be an artist but he is a businessman first and always approaches each new client or job professionally he's advising young people with dreams of working for themselves and doing what they love to do the same but most importantly he said you must follow your dreams if it's something that you see that you want to do whether it's art or anything else um, just follow your dreams, you would meet um, the naysayers in abundance. As a lot of people would tell me, artists don't make any money, you would never make any money. People today would say, hey, you don't think you need a real job? <laughs> well, I'm overbooked. You know, so you don't let people put their limitations on, on, on you. You don't accept the status quo that says you gotta have, you gotta, um, have a job that work in and a bank not nothing against bank but you could do you could do your thing you could you know and follow your dreams and know that there's a place for you in this country and, and indeed the world and when mb12 returns the power secure deal being called an exercise in futility stay with us